Tom, are you okay? I lost her. Her? She was going to be this epic, trilogy-worthy character. I was going to be the hottest writer in Hollywood. But I can't get past Act 1! You need some writer's group therapy. Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers. Are you ready for your session? The doctors are in. And if you like this podcast, make sure you go on iTunes and give us a, oh, I don't know, four, five, wish we could go higher than five, star rating. What do you think, Tom? Just like draw an extra one on the screen, like six stars. Just like use a little highlighter pen or something. (laughs) And leave us a good review. Yeah. So it's always good to get the ratings, but it's always nice when people say why they like this podcast. So. Anyway, speaking of... Speaking of writing... <laughs> writing things. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, uh, a lot of times uh, we get little comments here and there about, you know, we like your podcast. I want to become a writer. You know, how do I get started doing that? I'm, I'm like totally brand new to this. What do we do? And so we thought we'd take a little time just to go over kind of the basics um, for new, you know, new screenwriters out there so that they at least know where to go to get, you know, a few resources and learn a few things to get started. Because you and I both kind of did this kind of this way. We did it on our own. We didn't go to school, right? We are horrible people. I have not ever gone and gotten a degree in screenwriting. I was a journalism major, so I do know how to write, but don't have that screenwriting degree. It's definitely a different kind of writing. Yeah. Although, actually, I forgot who I was talking to, but one of... uh, Maybe it was one of the guys in our writers group. I can't remember. But somebody actually did say take a journalism class because journalists learn to get to the point and they learn to, you know, put the lead up top and you know how to do the research as well. So it's actually quite, quite useful as a screenwriter oh, that's a good point. to be a journalist. Okay. Yeah. So if you're a journalism major out there, then you already got to start. Yay. Hey, good for you. <laughs> okay. So what should we start with? Um, first thing you need to know is um, have a good idea. And where do you get your ideas? Now, we have a whole podcast on ideas. Well, I think, too, a lot of times as far as getting ideas is just look look around you, right? They say write what you know. And there's a reason for that because it'll come from the heart. You'll know what you're talking about. It's an experience that you have. And many things in the human world, they're universal feelings, right? Love, loss, grief, whatever. I always think it's interesting. You can always tell when people have been around Hollywood too much, or for me, when I was a songwriter, when I was on the road too much, because songs about being on the road or songs, or I'm sorry, scripts about another failing actor can get kind of boring. I mean, right. And people outside of Hollywood don't really want to know about what goes on Hollywood. They don't care. They can't relate. They can relate to an office comedy. They can relate to losing a loved one, but they're like, I'm not pursuing an acting degree. So I don't know why I care about, you know, a struggling actor. Yeah. So come up with a good idea and <laughs> <laughs> and have multiple ideas. It's not, you have multiple ideas. not just writing yeah. the great American novel. Cause guess what? Other people might not think that's the best idea ever. Yeah. Yeah. I have close to, I think 75 or 80 ideas in my idea file. Now all of them aren't going to become TV shows or films, but you got to generate a lot of ideas until one really pops out at you. is like, this is a really good idea. So I should write this. Yeah. And sometimes for me, I will keep a little notebook in my bag and <laughs> maybe I'm driving around or maybe I'm, you know, talking to somebody at work. I, my day job is not related to the industry, things like that. And you're like, ooh, it sparks something. So make sure you write down your ideas as you go through your day. Good advice. Yeah. So now you got an idea and you want to write something. So before you, you start writing anything, you should know how a script is structured. And the first thing I did when I learned to write screenplays was I watched the Sid Field's three-act structure. I think it was a DVD I actually got. That Sid Field's himself, he's a famous screenwriter. He actually teaches a lesson on how uh, scripts are structured. And they have three acts. You may have heard that already. Mm -hmm. You have your your first act introduces your characters and your inciting incident. That's what's going to send them on their journey. And then the rest of the story is kind of, well, Learn the structure, because 
<laughs> and read scripts because then you'll see how the structure plays out in all your the movies you've seen already. Yeah, you can actually Google a lot of scripts. I've uh, when I was doing spec scripts or writing pilots. I would Google different shows that I liked and was familiar with and get their pilot episodes. You can find it. There's some databases on there. And I would also suggest, and now this is because I'm coming at it as an actor, take an acting class because you learn how to break down a script. And then on the reverse side, you learn as a writer what an actor needs to interpret your script correctly. Punctuation, proper spelling, you know, don't go crazy and act like you're texting a friend when you write a script, things like that. Those are very basic things. And I know in the acting classes I've taken, we've done different scripts. For example, we've done Aaron Sorkin, or maybe we've looked at a classic film or something like that. And everybody has different styles. Tarantino has a different writing style versus Aaron Sorkin versus whoever. And it's interesting to see their styles and then watch the show and see how that translates. Right. And for TV, especially if you're want to write for TV, um, you should find a TV show you really like and find those scripts and see how they're structured. Because if you're going to become a, a TV writer, you're going to need to write what are called spec scripts, which are, are scripts for a show that already exists, but a, a new unique episode so that you can show people that you can understand an existing show and you can write a script in the style and format that they use. And make sure you get the script and not a transcript. Good point. Yeah, because some people will do a transcription where they basically just watch the show and maybe put the closed captioning on and you know kind of add things. You want to see how the writers wrote the action, how they wrote the you know intercuts and how they wrote everything, not somebody's interpretation of what they saw on the screen. Yeah, very good. And um the same going along with that, you see how the how long the scenes are and how long the acts are. Um, when I one of the first things I wrote was a spec script for Castle because I love that show, and I actually wrote two of them. But before I started writing them, I think I went through a dozen episodes, a dozen, a dozen scripts, and I figured out how many acts are there. You know how how long are each act, and and what happens approximately in each act because uh, it was a procedural show, so. Obviously, each episode followed a pretty formulaic structure. And once you understood that, then writing your story within that structure is a lot easier. Yeah. And I would say this kind of piggybacks off of a previous episode we did, but don't be afraid to get typecast. Just like actors, writers get typecast for certain types of shows or films that they are good at. Like Shonda Rhimes, you think Shonda Rhimes, drama, you know? Um, and it's okay to write in different genres, but when you're selling your stuff and and trying to pitch your work around, they're going to want to see that you can write consistently in one genre. And that's, again, that's specifically mainly TV, but in film too, also, you know, if you're writing, if you're writing a certain genre in film, it's, it kind of goes there too. Yeah. And, uh, uh, simply scripts is a great place to find scripts. That's one of the places I go first to, uh, look for scripts to read. You're so good about remembering. Like I said, I just Google it and I'm like, oh, here it is. Yeah. And I never remember where I went yeah. to find it. You can, also find, uh, you can also find scripts, bound scripts, at your local library or at Samuel French. I'm not just talking plays, although obviously plays, but you can find for a lot of the big films, Inception, Magnolia, whatever, they have them in book form. And you can find them you know, through Amazon or like I said, at your library, things like that. If you're in here in LA, we have the writer's store, Samuel French, and the Writers Guild has a big library of scripts. Mm -hmm. And I would also recommend the North Hollywood Library and the Durant Library, uh, which is located in Hollywood. Those two cater specifically towards actors, writers, and directors. So now that you've, you've read some scripts, you understand how they're built, and you've kind of learned how the structure is, you want to start writing something. So the first thing my favorite writing coach, uh, Barry Evans, would say is you do an outline. So um, an outline, uh, there's lots of different templates online. You can find beat sheets, they sometimes call them, outlines. And that will help you kind of make sure your story has a, a solid beginning, middle, and end, and an arc. And that way, when you actually start to write your script, you will have a good template to go from. It'll go smoother. You know, and in defense of outlines, this is so funny because... I've been writing now at least, what, two, three years. And I, when I first started writing, I was not an outline person. 
And now, because I'm in the middle of rewrites for so many different things, I actually find outlines really useful. I I never thought I would say that. I think Barry will love it when she hears that. Yeah, so. I just, I don't know yeah. what it is, but even though I don't have everything completely fleshed out in my head, just having that outline, yeah, yeah. So way to go. Cool. Sorry to all my old English school, or I'm sorry, yes, sorry to all right. my old English teachers. You were right. Yeah, you were totally you're right. Yeah. Um, and then we see a lot of questions about formatting. Like, you know, people always ask me, how do you do an intercut? How do you do a phone call? Um, there's a lot of good resources for that. I'm just going to tell you the storysense.com uh, is a, a great place to go. And I've got like two or three others. I'll put them all in the show notes. But um, there, it's usually pretty easy to learn the formatting once one from reading the scripts. And then also by, you know, if you have specific questions, these are great resources to go to. They'll tell you exactly how to do you know, those sorts of things and when to use them, when not to. Certain things though, like intercut, I think that's pretty standard, but because we are looking at some newer technologies like texting, for example, I've seen different ways of putting text messages and scripts and they're all correct. So just be aware of how new the technology as far as like what you're putting in there. Yeah. And like you said before, a lot of these, you know, Tarantino, these people, they have their own styles of writing scripts. So when you read them, don't always assume that what they're doing is what the normal kind of standard format is because and no one's going to tell Tarantino you can't do your script that way. Uh, so uh, make sure you kind of like, you know, check, you know, kind of your style guide, you know, uh, to make sure you're doing it. You know, how when you turn a script into an agent or a manager or, or you know, a showrunner or whoever, they're not going to go, who do you think you are, Tarantino? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, even Tarantino, I'm sure when he turned in his first script, they're like, what are you doing? Stop breaking convention. Right. And then just, you know, write, write and write and write. And then, um, don't you know, set yourself a goal. You know, I always find that's great for when I'm writing a script is to have, like, you write so many pages a day, um, you know, or, you know, say, like, this month I'm going to write three pages a day, and by the end of the month I'll have my first draft done. Um, just keep writing, you know, don't give up. Um, I have the, one of my biggest problems is I, I stop and then I don't go back and then I, then it's harder to go back and finish it. So I think getting through that first draft is the most important thing, you know, to get that first draft done. Then the rewriting is a little easier. Yeah. And do not censor yourself when you're writing, just get it all out there. It's okay if it's crap because it's your first draft, it's supposed to be crappy. So it's totally okay. Just get it all out there, and then polish it later. Yeah, I've heard the first draft is often called the garbage draft. You put everything in, no matter how bad it is, because um, you can you can always cut it out later. But if you don't put it in, then you won't have time to think about it. Or it may give you an idea of how to fix it or do it better, you know, but you have to have something to start with. Yeah. So how about for all of you? Any other questions you have for us as far as how to get started in writing? Let us know at WG Therapy. You can also find us online at writersgrouptherapy.com. And if you like what you hear, subscribe and share it with your friends. We'll see you next week.